No, sure. So, you know, uh, we, we know or, or at least suspect that chronic injections may have an impact on intraocular pressure. And so the, with intraocular pressure increases, there's always concern of you know, optic nerve issues and such as glaucoma. Um, we've always wondered that with our typical injections in the past uh, with uh, anti-VEGFs, which are typically 0.05 cc's in volume. And uh, in particular with a high dose of flibercept, that's 0.07 cc's in volume, so slightly more. And so the question is, in particular, as it relates to high dose of flibercept, does, does that really make a difference? Um, should we be more concerned or equally concerned or, or possibly less concerned than with the regular injections? No, absolutely. So as, as you know, the photon study looked at uh, patients with diabetic macular edema uh, being treated with uh, varying intervals with uh, high dose of flibercept versus standard intervals with uh, um, two milligrams of flibercept. And this was a post hoc analysis looking at the intraocular pressure in, in those eyes, the treated eyes in, in those two, you know, three categories, the two treatment arms and the one control arm, and also, frankly, the fellow eyes. And the fellow eyes, you can break down into the eyes that also received two milligrams of flibercept as, as per standard of care. And those that were untreated, to see, is there a difference? Can you tease out a difference in terms of intraocular pressure? No, absolutely. So uh, the, the take home message here is that this data was spectacularly unimpressive, meaning there's nothing to see here. Um, when you look at eyes that were treated with the eight milligram dose, uh, if you look at the pre-dose IOP throughout, you know, one year's worth of data, it remained remarkably stable. Also, if you look at the the changes, there was hardly any difference. If you now, if you compare that to fellow eyes, whether treated or untreated, those remained remarkably stable as well. Now, if you look at eyes that um, perhaps didn't have glaucoma before, and you see, well, how many of them needed to be put on intraocular pressure lowering agents? And the number is actually quite small. And, and again, comparable across categories. You're looking at one, maybe 2% of eyes. If you look at eyes that needed any kind of uh, procedure, surgical procedures or, or interventions for lowering eye, intraocular pressures, the only intervention really that was needed was an AC tap. And that was done, frankly, again, very rarely, vanishingly small. And didn't really have much to do with two milligrams versus eight milligrams. So um, ultimately, no matter how you slice the data or look at it, it seems that uh, across one year's worth of data and a postdoc analysis in patients with diabetic macadema, that eight milligrams of flibercept, meaning 0.07 cc's, was well tolerated. Well, you know, so far we've been very happy with the safety profile. It seems very safe uh, in, in keeping with the two milligram history that we've now uh, accumulated over time. Um, again, I think the intraocular pressure, uh, intraocular pressure question was interesting because we know for a fact the 0.07 is different than 0.05. And the question is, how does that really impact our patient population? Now, there's several, you know, um, um, caveats here, right? This is a postdoc analysis. This, this is in, a, a, in a, tr a clinical trial population. So this is not necessarily generalizable, but also remember, we also looked at fellow eyes and these fellow eyes, uh, while, while the patient was a clinical trial patient, the fellow eye may not have met the criteria. So it gives you in some ways a quasi real world answer as well, um, because um, to, to see if there's any differences with two milligrams, at, at least as a comparison.